In 2021, a UL report described something that sounds like science fiction, but isn't. A Turkish-made military drone, the Cargo 2, I defied a human target in Libya. It locked on, it engaged, it killed. No human ordered the strike. The drone acted autonomously, exactly as designed. The system worked. But ask yourself, was it right? This wasn't one-off. In the Netherlands, a government algorithm flagged thousands of families as welfare fraud risk. Many were immigrants. Many lost benefits. Some lost their homes. Why? Because the system used historical data to calculate risk. But no one stopped to question what the data represented or who it left behind. A court later ruled the algorithm discriminatory, but by then, the damage was done. So who answers for that? One system wages war, another manages welfare. But both raise the same question. When machines make decisions and people suffer, who carries the moral weight? Let's bring in philosopher Michael Sandel, who calls this the danger of moral outsourcing. When we delegate not just choices, but judgment to systems that feel no duty, no guilt, no regret. This episode isn't about whether machines are efficient. They often are. It's about something deeper. Can machine ever make a moral decision? Before we go any further, let's ask, what is a moral decision? What features make a decision moral? So before we ask whether machines can make moral decisions, we need to ask something more basic. What exactly makes a decision moral? Moral decisions aren't about choosing between options. They're not about efficiency or success or even survival. They're about meaning, about responsibility, about answering the question, what I ought to do. Let's break it down. Philosophers, often say there are three pillars to moral decision making. Pillar number one, moral awareness. This refers to the ability to recognize that a decision has ethical weight. That what's at stake isn't just outcomes, but rightness. Pillar number two, intentionality. A moral act isn't accidental. It's done on purpose for reasons that can be explained. As Kant would say, it must arise from a sense of duty, not just instinct or reward. Pillar number three, accountability. To be moral, an agent must be willing to answer for their choice, not just explain it, but own it. Let's bring these features to life. A firefighter enters a burning building, inside a fellow firefighter and a child, both unconscious, but only one can be saved. Whatever they choose, someone dies. But what makes a small decision isn't the outcome. It's a weight of the choice. Let's break the moment down. The firefighter knows this isn't just a tough call. It's a moral one. A life will be lost. The weight is real. This is small awareness. Now the firefighter has to choose. Ideas choose with purpose, not by instinct, not by rule book but by values, however personal or painful. This is intentionality. Now, once the decision has been made, they don't hide from it. I choose the child. I had to. That's not data. That's responsibility. Now, that's a third pillar, accountability. So now we return to our opening question with a sharper lens. If a moral decision requires these three things, can a machine ever truly make a moral decision? So far, we have said that a moral decision needs three things. Moral awareness, intentionality, and accountability. Now let's put the machines to the test, not in theory, in the real world. Let's start with hiring. In 2018, Amazon scrapped an AI recruitment tool. Why? Because it downgraded, the tool downgraded resumes from women. The system wasn't designed to discriminate. 
but it was trained on 10 years of resumes, mostly from men. So the system learned from the past, and in doing so, it repeated its bias. Now the question is, was the algorithm aware that it was discriminating? No. Did it intend to disadvantage women? No. Could it take responsibility for the result? Absolutely not. It simply followed instructions that took perfectly. Now let's take another scenario, healthcare. In US hospitals, a widely used algorithm helped assess patient risk. But studies found it consistently underestimated the needs of black patients compared to the white patients with the same conditions. The algorithm wasn't malicious, it was mathematical. It used past healthcare spending as a proxy for healthcare need. But because less had historically been spent on black patients, the system concluded they needed less care. Not because of health, but because of history. Or let's take policing. Predictive algorithms in several US cities flagged certain neighborhoods, often poor, often black and Latino, as high crime zones. Not because crime was objectively higher, but because more police had been sent there in the past. So more errors were made, so more data was recorded, so the algorithm sent even more patrols and the cycle hardened. Data became destiny. In all the above three cases, the system didn't go rogue. It didn't malfunction. It worked as built, amplifying old patterns under the banner of objectivity. That's a quiet danger. These systems don't break rules. They follow them faithfully. And the more we let machines make these calls, the more we risk forgetting how to make them ourselves. Philosopher Shan Waller calls it moral de-skilling, which means these machines slowly erode our capacity to judge rightly because we have outsourced the practice of judgment itself. Well, let's take one more philosopher, Luciano Floridi. He says popularly that AI lacks semantic understanding, that is, the ability to grasp meaning. Therefore, it lacks small awareness. And without that moral awareness, even the most adverse AI can't recognize right from wrong. So let's bring all the three pillars together. Awareness, intent, accountability. Without them, a system doesn't decide. It executes. It follows orders. Even when those orders cause harm. Which leads us to a deeper question. Is technology in itself the problem? Or the way we choose to use it, that's a problem. Because in every case we have seen in warfare, welfare, hiring and healthcare, the outcome wasn't random, it was chosen. Just not by the machine alone, there was always a human factor. Let's just understand one thing, machines don't just wake up one morning and wonder what's the right thing to do today. The question is still ours, we are the ones. When a drone strikes without a human trigger, it's because someone chose to delegate that authority. When an algorithm wrongly denies benefits, it's because someone approved the rules that led to that outcome. The moral decision hasn't vanished. It has just been pushed one step further away, tucked behind a layer of code, a technical process, or an impersonal system. Let's bring in philosopher Helen Nissenbaum. She calls this the problem of accountability gaps. In complex systems, the responsibility is so spread out that no one feels it fully. And when no one owns a decision, no one can be held to account. Muragi loses its anchor. It's the opposite of what moral agency demands. Not just acting, but answering for your action. Let's go back to a firefighter. If they make a choice that costs a life, they have to stand before their peers and explain it. That's what it means to own a moral decision. It lives in public. It has consequences. It's not hidden behind a dashboard or buried in a model. But with the same choices outsourced to an algorithm, who does the explaining? The programmer? The company? 
the government that deployed it all of them or no one this is the turning point because the real question isn't can machines be moral it's this we we stay moral when we use the machines let me bring in ethicist venil volak here he puts it bluntly our challenge isn't building artificial moral agents it's avoiding the erosion of human moral responsibility that is the danger not just what machines can do but what we quietly stop doing when we let them decide for us because every time we automate a decision that affects a human life we are not just outsourcing a task we are making a moral trade so the real question isn't what machines are capable of it's what we are willing to hand over so the stakes are this high what should guide us what help us draw the line between what we can safely automate and what must always stay in human hands here's the truth machines are already involved in moral context that's not hypothetical it's happening so the challenge isn't just saying no to automation it's knowing where to say no and why philosophers and ethicists have offered a way forward not a blueprint but a compass three moral guardrails that help us ask the right question before we hand off our decision to a machine first up the harm test this means could this decision cause serious irreversible harm to a person's life rights or dignity philosopher thomas scanlon in what we owe to each other argues an action is wrong if it can't be justified to the people it affects so ask yourself if a machine made the call and harmed someone could you look at them in the eye and explain why if the answer is no that means that decision doesn't belong to the system the second test is called transparency test can the person affected understand how the decision was made philosopher onora o'neil in her reet lectures on trust says trust isn't built through promises it's built through explanations but many algorithms are black boxes even the people who design them can't fully explain their decisions if a process is too complex too secret to be explained its small legitimacy collapses now the third test the accountability test is there a clearly identified person or institution that will take the responsibility for the decision ethicist debra johnson a pioneer in computer ethics warns when responsibility is diffused across a system moral agency disappears without a clear line of accountability we don't just have a technical problem we have a responsibility vacuum and in moral terms a vacuum is a failure so how do these tests hold up in the real world let's apply them to the cases we have seen autonomous drones fail all the three welfare algorithms fail transparency and accountability ai hiring tools fail harm and transparency test none of these technologies are evil by design but if they fail these basic tests we are using them in ways they don't deserve and can't support these three guardrails won't solve everything but they are meant to also they are a checklist they are a moral compass and in a world moving fast on ai a compass is better than a blindfold we began with a drone deciding life and death an algorithm deciding who gets help moments where machines acted but morality still belong to us because the truth is technology changes what is possible it does not change what is right philosopher luciano floridi warns in the age of ai our greatest danger isn't that machines will rebel it's that we'll quietly surrender surrender our judgment our responsibility our moral agency not in defiance but in convenience you see it before in bureaucracies in markets in militaries whenever decision making becomes abstract people start saying the system decided my hands are clean 
but moral hands aren't clean just because they are far from the lever. Distance doesn't erase responsibility, it only hides it. The harm, transparency and accountability tests aren't just tools for regulating AI. The reminders that every automated decision affecting a human life is still our decision. And if no one is willing to face the person on the other side of that decision to justify it, to answer for it, to carry its weight, then it should not be made by a machine. So the next time when you hear someone say, the algorithm made that call, ask who built it, who approved it, who benefits from it, and most importantly, could they defend that decision to the person it affected? Because when machines act, it's not the circuits that carry the moral weight, it's us. So long, happy learning.